What does Jesus see in us as his sheep? I mean, if if he calls us sheep, if he says, I'm the shepherd, if you're the sheep, you're my flock, what to us who only find sheep under saran wrap on styrofoam, you know, at Harding's, I mean, what is the picture we're supposed to have? You know, we're all wrapped up in cold. You know, I mean, what is the idea of sheep when God says, that's how I see you? Well, just some truths. Number one, as sheep, we need his constant guidance. Uh, If you know anything about sheep, sheep are utterly helpless. They can't find their way without a guide. If there's pasture right in front of them, the sheep are apparently incapable of finding it for themselves. They have to have someone come down and guide them. And that's, that's the idea that we as his sheep, need constant guidance. That's why God, looking at humanity, said in Isaiah 53 that all humanity are like sheep that have gone what? Astray. Yeah, that's just, we're in constant need of guidance. Secondly, as sheep, we need constant cleansing. Now, most of us, I mean, our, our understanding of things is so driven by, you know, storybooks and fairy tales and movies that we don't really know much about sheep. I mean, sheep are the dirtiest animals associated with humans. The natural tendency of wool in its raw and wild state is to just suck up and hold any defilement that gets near it. There is a very unpleasant odor that's natural to sheep. I remember Bonnie and I, I was was speaking down in New Zealand once and, and we went to, you know, there's more sheep in New Zealand than anything but hobbits, or I mean anything but uh, sheep. I mean, uh, there are just more sheep than people in New Zealand. And we went to a giant sheep farm. Oh, man. I mean, it, it's unpleasant, and, and it just sm- there's this unique odor. And then mud dries on their pelt in the most bedraggled patterns. I mean, when we take people to Israel and, and, and they want to see a flock of sheep and we happen to see one out there in the, in the uh, Shephelah, we'll stop the bus and they all run off and they start taking pictures. But if they look at those pictures, I mean, they're just looking at waves of dirt that, that are clinging to those sheep in the most bedraggled patterns imaginable. And the adherence of mud to the sheep is persistent. No matter how dry the mud becomes, it never powders and falls off. You can't get it off the sheep. It's just, they just are magnets to dirt. And above all the creatures associated with the life of man, the sheep is unquestionably the dirtiest. And any poet or any writer that sings the praises of snow-white sheep has probably never seen them in their natural condition. Because as the sheep cross through their journeyings together in flocks, the dust of their passing coats them until sheep become the same color as the terrain they're walking through. Because they become walking dirties. Sheep are the only animals that are totally incapable of self-cleansing. The dirtier a sheep gets, the more helpless it becomes. And that's why it says, the Lord is my shepherd, and he leads me to stilled waters. It's because a sheep can't go plowing through like cattle through a river. If a sheep goes in the river, it, it, they, lose, they, they, they lose their balance. They are top-heavy because it fills up with water. Their feet go up, and they sink to the bottom because they're like a sponge. They're afraid of water. They don't take baths. They don't do anything. Thirdly, As sheep, not only are we in constant need of guidance and constant need of cleansing, but we need constant care. Now, I want you to think about something, because we've all heard of sheep. Sheep are among the most tender of creatures. They're always suffering hurt and pain. When sheep are processed at meat markets, it's rare to find a pelt that isn't scarred, and when they skin the pelt off, a carcass that isn't bruised. You know, it's kind of like going to the farmer's market and you get this beautiful peach. I mean, it's just perfect. And you want to get it home, but by the time you get it home, it has a bruise on it. And you go, I didn't do anything to it. It's just bruised. That's how sheep are. They're easily hurt, scarred, bruised. Sheep spend half of their day bleeding because of their physical distress and the rest of their time bumping into something else that hurts them again. They have no, ten- no natural joy. There's just, you almost feel tender about them because they're so helpless. In fact, the only redeeming thing about a sheep is its utter helplessness and and inability to do anything. You want to help it. So that leads us to the next truth. Our good shepherd saw an utterly 
in need of guidance, utterly in need of cleansing, utterly in need of care. People, and our great shepherd died to redeem and rescue and save helpless sheep who can't cleanse himself, who can't get rid, who can't naturally have no ability to self-cleanse. And we're the dirtiest. As humans, we're the dirtiest because we are made in the image of God and we, we are gravitated towards sin and we absorb it. And so our good shepherd died. The only way to rescue sheep headed to destruction was to come down and show them the way out. And that's exactly what God did in Christ. As John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he said, he is the lamb. He became a lamb to lead the sheep out of the destruction they were headed toward. And so Jesus was the lamb of God, the perfect personal fulfillment of all the Jewish sacrificial system. So, chapter 10, verse 1, as his sheep, we are so helpless, so incapable of cleansing or protecting ourselves. Jesus said, I'm going to come save you. So what's the point? Chapter 10 is this. True sheep hear the voice of Jesus Christ as their shepherd, and they follow him. 